Good morning. This is the 13th, 18th lecture of uh, ASA level chemistry lecture series. We were talking about group chemistry of group one and group two elements. Uh, this is the continuation of chemistry of group two metals. But this, this is group two elements. Well, we see that many compounds we get of group two elements as minerals like chalk, marble, limestone. These are calcium carbonate, dolomite. This is a mixture of calcium and magnesium carbonate. Fluorspar, this is a calcium fluoride, which is an ornamental mineral. So these group compounds are insoluble in water, unlike group one compounds. But now we go for reactions of group two elements, except beryllium, metal two, group, group two of metals, burn in oxygen on heating giving ionic oxide. Well, magnesium burns very brightly for which it is uh, used as uh, uh, as fireworks. Calcium also burns brightly in air with red flame and strontium, which is in similar way burns in excess of air with a green flame of uh, and barium, barium forms peroxide. And peroxide, this is the anion of peroxide. We know very well that oxide has got minus two oxidation state, but here you see it is minus one oxidation state. And this is barium peroxide. Next slide, we react these elements with water. From magnesium to barium, we see that it reacts with water. Depending on cold water and in steam, we get uh, different types of reaction. In cold water, we always get mag uh, metal hydroxide, such as uh, magnesium gives in cold water magnesium hydroxide. But if we give in steam water, then we don't get magnesium hydroxide, it becomes magnesium oxide. In cold water, like magnesium, buried, uh, calcium reacts with water and gives calcium hydroxide. One, one interesting thing that calcium hydroxide is less soluble. So uh, it, is, as it is formed and then in a few, few minutes time, it becomes a saturated solution and we get white precipitate. Okay, barium reacts with, uh, even faster with cold water, that means if we go down the group, water reacts faster and faster with the elements. Reaction with chlorine. All metal of group two, including beryllium, reacts with chlorine, gives us uh, chlorides, white chloride. And then the, some properties of uh, compounds of group two metals. The oxides, if you react uh, oxides with acid, we, you get salt. In this case, you see, it is calcium nitrate. Similarly, magnesium oxide, uh, when we, we say it reacts with water, gives magnesium hydro hydroxide, which is slightly soluble. Magnesium oxide, it has got a very important property because uh, it is high uh, melting point and therefore it is heat resistance and we use this magnesium oxide as ceramic and line the furnace for high temperature furnaces. Calcium oxide, when uh, we heat, it becomes calcium carbonate and calcium oxide reacts rapidly with quick up water and gives us calcium hydroxide and that what we call quick light. Barium, magnesium to barium, that gives us metal hydroxide uh, similar to those dig, uh, some degree soluble in water forming alkaline solution. 
see. So the differ in their solubility increase the solubility increase down the group of the elements. And barium hydroxide is soluble in water, uh, uh, and then barium hydroxide is also used as an alkali. It is uh, uh, better to use barium hydroxide as alkali because it cannot contaminate by carbonate as uh, other magnesia um, compound, as other compound like magnesium or beryllium or calcium, which is contaminated with some carbonate, but it is not contaminated. Barium is not contaminated with carbonate and therefore it is a better uh, uh, alkali in chemical analysis. The carbonates compounds, again, magnesium to barium is insoluble in water, it, uh, uh, but soluble in dil dilute acid and decomposes on heating and giving us metal oxides and carbon dioxide. Nitrate are colorless crystalline solid are uh, uh, sol uh, uh, decomposes as magnesium oxide and nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen. Like carbonate, they become more difficult to decompose. That is, they are thermally more stable. Sulfate of these elements are uh, also, also uh, colorless solid and become less soluble down the group. That means they are more stable in uh, when we go down the group. Magnesium sulfate, this magnesium sulfate with seven molecules of water called Epsom salt, it's, which is also used as a, a laxatic. We have an gypsum, which is uh, formula is calcium sulfate with two molecules of water, which is also produced in large scale to remove sulfur dioxide in flue glasses and coal-fired power station. Another very important compound we call plaster of Paris, calcium sulfate, sulfate with half molecules of water. This is an ingredient in building material. Well, this barium occurs naturally as minerals with barium carbonate and barium sulfate. An important use of barium sulfate is also an uh, ingredient of barium meals. What do you mean by barium meals? Because we drink this barium milks and it as it absorbs strongly x-ray, so we can see the stomach disorderness or instantaneous disorderness by x-ray. Other uh, other uh, compounds of sulfate of these group two elements cannot be used because they are toxic, but barium is, is insoluble and therefore it is not toxic. There is a uh, some, some picture of uh, or table of uh, the, these uh, compounds of uh, group two elements. For example, magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate, strontium carbonate, barium carbonate, which shows the uh, melting point here. And therefore, it, you can see it is stable if we go down the group. Or the higher and higher melting point, therefore it is stable down the group. Here we see uh, a gypsum, a mine in Mexico, the gypsum crystals. Here you can see uh, a worker is standing on a crystal. Okay, it said that the gypsum uh, crystals, mineral crystals are of this Mexico mine as the largest crystal known in the world. Here, as I say, the uh, beryllium and magnesium, uh, barium and uh, uh, it can be, uh, can be uh, mined as barite. Uh, you see this barite sample. And here is a normal patient's uh, stomach x-ray uh, by, by uh, taking beryllium in X-ray. Well, then we go for uh, another group of elements in the syllabus, which is group 17, and we call it halogen group. You can see I wrote all the names, fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, estatine, and then 
tennis tennis these are the member of the uh, halogen group and group number 17 in the periodic table we would not talk very much about estatine and uh, tennessee because the, these are radioactive elements and they, they have got very rather short half-lives so the chemistry of uh, radioactive elements uh, are not in the syllabus of AS and A level chemistry. However, when, when you go to university, you read radiochemistry, and there you can uh, see the chemistry of these two elements. Well, all uh, for other other four elements that is fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, they are diatomic molecule, and they are non-metal. Fluorine, fluorine. Uh, are extremely uh, uh, toxic, hazardous, and so they are also very reactive. So we have to specifically, when dealing with fluorine, be very careful and uh, limited uh, use in the laboratory level under supervision because it's very toxic, dangerous, and it, it, even it can it can uh, if a uh, uh, researcher come into contact without precaution, he might get uh, immediate uh, uh, hazardousness from chlorine, which will even uh, create uh, permanent hazard in the body. So one has to be very careful about uh, doing chemistry of chlorine and chlorine in the laboratory. Okay. Why uh, it is also called, why it is called halogen? Because it means halogen means salt format. That means these elements form very easily salt. Here are the element, uh, as a picture of elements in of uh, halogen, specifically three halogen, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And remember that we have a electronic configuration, the valential electronic configuration of this all elements is S2, P5. This is group number two, group, group number two, group number three, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, call, uh, uh, I, I, I should say, uh, uh, group, it is not group number, it is, uh, Period number, period number two, period number three, period number uh, four, period number five, and period four and five. So all these these are the uh, in inertial electronic configuration, and this is the outer shell electronic configuration. And you know that electron of the outer shell electronic configuration or valence cell electronic configuration are uh, do come into the reaction, not the inner shell. In, electronic configuration. So as the valence electric configuration always S2, P5, so therefore there are seven valence electron electron and they tend to get one more electron and get inert uh, configuration and therefore they react very highly. So I said uh, all molecules that are diametric diatomic molecules and they have a single covalent bond. They are volatile. Larger halogen molecules are more polarizable <clears throat> and therefore uh, they, the element chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, we see the melting temperature and boiling temperature rise when it go down the road. Well, as I said, this is toxic, fluorine toxic, and too dangerous to use in the laboratory. Fluorine is the most electronegative element of all elements in the periodic table. If you remember what is electronegativity, uh, I, I, I say it again here, electronegativity is the power of attracting bonding electron towards the element, and that is he used a scale. The scale is the four is the highest scale, and it's called Linus Pauling scale of the elements of all the elements in the periodic table. So 
fluorine has got food and rest all are down the uh, uh, less than four. So here is the electronegativity, the other three elements of uh, halogen, fluorine three, bromine 2.8, iodine 2.5. Well, we should remember also here that the higher the electronegativity, the uh, more powerful reaction will get. Okay, one, one, one more uh, important thing is that uh, fluorine has got uh, oxygen state minus one. That means in all of fluorine compounds, we get fluorine as a minus one oxidation state, only minus one oxidation state. We, we, we do remember that group one elements, they have got only plus one oxygen state and group two elements, they have only plus two oxidation state. And we say there are other elements where they do have a variable oxidation state. We will also see that chlorine, bromine and iodine do have, do have variable oxidation state. Uh, we, we come to it later. That uh, fluorine include the manufacture of wide range of compounds uh, only with carbon, and they, these compounds are called fluorocarbons. They are uh, they are uh, most familiar because they 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 form poly uh, compound. That means we have got very slippery non-sticky polymer which we call poly tetrafluoroethane. This is carbon compound, chlorated, poly tetrachloroethane, this is a polymer. Chlorine reacts directly with most elements. Uh, and it has, it shows minus one state, but when we get uh, chlorine form compounds with uh, say carbon oxygen and uh, other, other, other halogen, specific, specifically uh, fluorine, we will say that uh, uh, chlorine would have variable oxidation state too. Uh, you, you know very well that water companies use chlorine to kill bacteria in drinking water. And also we have some other industries which is bleach, which use chlorine to bleach paper and te in textile also. Bromine, like other halogen, uh, is, a, is a powerful oxidizing agent, but it is less powerful oxidizing agent than chlorine. We could, we could say that this is the most powerful oxidizing agent in a uh, chemical world, most powerful oxidizing agent. This is a uh, little bit less than uh, chlorine. This is, chlorine is, bromine is less than chlorine and uh, 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 bromine is, uh, is greater than iodine. Iodine is the least powerful oxidizing agent in some cases, it do work. It does work as reducing it in two. Okay, so we produce a flame retardant med uh, product, medicines and dyes with the uh, bromine too. And then you can say RD. We have uh, medicine dyes and catalyst that are the use of uh, RD. We do get a little bit of reaction of these uh, uh, elements, reaction with, of halogen with metals, almost all S block metals. I would say, let's say not only S block metals, also D block metals react with uh, uh, halogen and forming ionic halides. Iodine also reacts with metals and form iodides, but because of polarizability, large iodide ion, these iodides are formed with uh, smaller cations and uh, not uh, only uh, ionic compounds, but can also form covalent compounds. For example, lithium with uh, halogen can form covalent compound. Aluminium with halogen can form covalent compound. Here you see how to make a uh, how to uh, make uh, iron three compounds using this apparatus in the laboratory. What you do, 
we pass dry chlorine gas in a tube and here is iron or uh, metal iron and then we keep it in a combustion combustion tube and heat it and then we form uh, iron chloride in the, uh, in the laboratory be careful if we do not have a drying agent have this the drying agent otherwise it, this iron chloride will form and gets moist so we keep the iron chloride dry we use this drying agent well we continue the reaction of halogen with non-metals most non-metals in the periodic table will react with halogen example silicon is a non-metal it reacts with halogen forming silicon tetrachloride which we use in many organic compounds to form many organic compounds and phosphorus also reacts with chlorine plus uh, 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 phosphorus trichloride a liquid but when we heat with excess of chlorine we get phosphorus pentachloride see okay chlorine does not react directly with carbon oxygen and nitrogen we have to remember this hydrogen balance in chlorine and get hydrogen chloride note that ignition of the mixture of chlorine and hydrogen gas can have a violent explosion this is the reaction okay bromine also form molecular bromides uh, the hydrogen and bromine we get molecular bromides and note it that iodine reacts with hydrogen uh, but this is a reversible reaction not like the other the non-reversible but this is a reversible reaction that, that means we can form hydrogen iodide again we can break this hydrogen iodide to hydrogen and iodine we talked we talked about uh, iron compound reaction of iron ions with the uh, halogen and we, we see that iron 2 can be oxidized with iron 3 too but please do remember that oxidizing agent iron is oxidizing agent but here you can see that we cannot uh, oxidize um, our iron to iodide I, it is it is because the oxidizing agent iodine oxidizing agent is a weak oxidizing agent and therefore it cannot form iron 3 to iron 2 by uh, uh, iodine and that will be the uh, uh, slides we talked about in this lecture i'll i hope to continue the uh, next lecture and finish halogen plus in the syllabus the compound of nitrogen that is in as syllabus Thank you very much for today's lecture on for your attention to. We'll see we we'll see us in the next lecture that is 19th lecture. Thank you.